spotting slots or finding slots is very difficult because many of, most of the times they are very high in trees and we see like a little fur ball. So obviously we can't count them because we don't know if this is the same slot that we have seen yesterday. So um, the dogs um, help us because they can smell the poops and then we can count how many poops we find in like specific areas um, and then we can estimate more or less how many slots live in these areas. Um, it's very important because slots here in Costa Rica are not um, an endangered species, but we are convinced that um, they are endangered. So now we are trying to count how many slots are really living here and then we can see um, if we can protect them more. Hello, my name is Tamara. I work for the Slot Conservation Foundation in Costa Rica and I'm in charge of the SCAD Detection Dog project. We are training a SCAD Detection Dog who can smell slot poop and our goal is to make a census of all the slot population here in Costa Rica. For now I just will like collect the poops but we can do and we want to do DNA analysis after and also see maybe um, if slots here on the Caribbean side have different DNA than slots in the Pacific side or in the Central Valley. And then obviously with the DNA you can like differentiate if it's the same slot or not. We work together with Working Dogs for Conservation, um, a nonprofit organization from the United States and they have a lot of experience in training conservation dogs. We contacted them and then Mark, the trainer, um, came here. So the process of starting training is uh, it's very similar to other detection dogs, uh, like we, we think about police, narcotics, uh, drug dogs or explosive dogs. It's basically associating the odor that we want them to find, which is sloth scab, uh, with something positive and rewarding. And for Keisha, it's uh, her toys. She has a very high drive to play with toys. She likes tugs and balls. and um, So we associate that odor uh, with something with value and then the dogs learn that you know, it's a game to them. They start the game, they search for the odor that they've been taught to find, and then they get to play with their handler and have a big, big party. Working here in Costa Rica in the jungle is not always easy um, because obviously it's a very humid climate and there's a lot of animals and smells and also a lot of dangerous animals like snakes um, and we are working in like primary forest, secondary forest, um, going through like deep jungle so I always try to watch out for snakes but this is obviously a challenge. This is why we do normally work early in the morning after snakes were like hunting in the night and hopefully like sleep in the morning. Um, then obviously there's scorpions and spiders or also ants that can like bite her in the feet or in her nose um, and also me. So we are always going um, with a lot of caution and also I'm never going alone because yeah, if something happens I always have one person or if something happens to Keisha so we always um, are minimum two people and have like a vehicle close, so, yeah. So Keisha and Daiko, they're um, my dogs. I have Keisha for five years, she's a rescue dog, and Daiko for four years. And obviously they were just normal pets, but they were always very high energy. <laughs> they were not always easy. And they were very toy driven, like they loved just to play. So yeah, now they like, went over from being pets to like being working dogs, which is a little bit different because, for example, I can't play with them now in my free time because playing is all only like the prize for their work. But um, yeah, they actually really like the, the work and I feel like they are like more balanced now. <laughs> Keisha will be like the main detection dog, which is also a good choice because she's like more agile, doesn't have like this long hair, so can do better in the heat and has like more stamina, so I think she's uh, a very good job. This is awesome! She's 
like, I love it. Good girl.